bin Laden's death. So what does bin Laden's demise mean for the fight against global terrorism? Well, Shashank Joshi is an associate fellow of uh, Royal United Services Institute, which is dedicated to defense and security research. He joins me in the studio now. So we'll get to the details of circumstances of bin Laden's death in a moment. But I want to start by putting that very question to you. How much of a boost, how significant is this, is this for, uh, for U.S. foreign policy? Well, this is a moment of utter catharsis. This has been for 10 years the singular focus of so many in the American administration. And of course, let's remember in 2001, this is the one that got away in the famous battle at Tora Bora. Osama bin Laden escaped from the Afghan mountains into Pakistan. And that really left this gaping wound for American foreign policy. He is the central symbol of 9 11, and his capture really closes a, a, a chapter on an era for the United States. Okay, so what does this mean for the war in Afghanistan? How much of an impact is it likely to have? How does bin Laden's death impact the sort of. When we look at Al Qaeda, is there much of an operational impact there? There's minimal operational impact, but there are a couple of implications. One of them is, let's look at where he was captured, outside Islamabad. That is, we all thought he was in the mountains of Pakistan, the northwest frontier province, or the tribal areas. He was near an urban area, near a Pakistani military academy, you know, just under the nose of the authorities. This raises some very awkward questions. Is that great of fuel Of state suspicion? complicity. And this comes, of course, a couple of months after a CIA contractor, Raymond Davis, was arrested in Pakistan pushing up Pakistan-U.S. tensions to their height. Now, what that means is it complicates American efforts to stabilize the situation in Afghanistan with Pakistani support. It increases mistrust of Pakistan. But second, it may work in a favorable direction if the American administration can sell to its people that this is mission accomplished, that with the capture of Osama bin Laden, the Taliban threat of hosting al-Qaeda, inviting al-Qaeda back in, just doesn't exist. If that happens, we could see a real fillet for the withdrawal effort from Afghanistan. What about the significance of Ayman al-Zawahiri, who was essentially bin Laden's deputy? Well, bin Laden, of course, wasn't the only member of the, the senior leadership, but he was the most charismatic, the most enigmatic. Zawahiri can't just step in his shoes. Bin Laden, for so many years, by virtue of his uh, involvement in the anti-Soviet jihad in Afghanistan, his, his videotapes, his, of course, his, the mystery about him for having eluded American capture is really irreplaceable. But here's the important thing. Al-Qaeda is a franchise organization. It is not based centrally. It is decentralized. And the groups that joined Al-Qaeda over the years, groups like Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, are much more operationally potent. And so whatever happens at the middle with bin Laden, Zawahiri, is not going to really impact what happens at the So edge. this doesn't ultimately have much of an impact on Al-Qaeda's potency because there isn't a single structure or chain of command as such that bin Laden was... Right, we talk about it, Al-Qaeda, we mean disparate groups who have local struggles, national struggles, but adopt the Al-Qaeda brand. They will continue the fight. So symbolically, this, this really is significant. This ends a, an era, but practically it doesn't. The war on terror continues. What about U.S.-Pakistan relations? Absolutely key cooperation between those countries in the war in Afghanistan. Is that going to be harmed by the fact that bin Laden was found in a city close to the capital? It would have been difficult for him to exist there without the knowledge of, of perhaps certain members of the ISI. That, right. That's what many analysts are saying. And indeed, it was also the site of a military training institution. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, we, we have known for years the Pakistani security and intelligence establishment has had connections to groups that in turn have been affiliated with or cooperated with al-Qaeda. I'm thinking of groups like the Haqqani Network in Afghanistan, Lashkari Taiba, and a host of other militant groups like, the Pakistan, like, like other groups situated within Pakistan. And the question is, why would Pakistan protect Osama bin Laden? I think it's unlikely there was at the highest level state support for any such policy, but elements within the intelligence establishment may well have known about this. And that's probably why the Americans did not tip off the Pakistanis about this operation in advance. It was undertaken with some cooperation, but not foreknowledge. Okay, Shashank Joshi, thanks very much indeed. Well, so after the break, we're going to continue.